Okay, so now I'm going to do my kernel compilation. So, um, I'm not worried about it too much. I've done this before, and I think I know it's anticipate. Now, uh, notice I've changed directories already into user source Linux. I've cleared this out for you to give you a clean slate so you can see what's going on, but there's not much to see after I start. So I go make space x config. And again, this won't work unless you have the Qt3 development package installed on your system. It just, this will not come up. Now this is what it looks like. Um, split the kernel package into multiple RPMs. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, I am... I don't know if they have a... Yeah, okay, there's a find. So I'm going to look for Dezuko. And I'll give you a little bit of background. And I'm finding nothing. Okay, so I'll have to get to that. I'll give you a little bit of background. And maybe I'll poke around in here since I'm in here as root anyway. So I'm going to go into... Um, and this. I'll tell you the way it used to work, and I'll see if it's the same. Um, usually in your user source Linux directory, there would be a... Um, in fact, I'm going to look, go into view modes, view hidden files. Show, show hidden files. Okay, there is, or there used to be at least, a, um, certainly isn't mail cap. Um, there used to be a dot config file, if I remember right in there, and all these options that are loading up automatically, uh, how, how do I, how do I describe that? Where am I? In this, notice that some of these things are, are, are checked off. Enable loadable module support is already checked off. You know, because it keeps track of how it was configured already. And there's a special directory where SUSE puts its .config file, and it's probably not it's not in the usual place in this case. And so, actually, this graphical user interface is reading that configuration file. And as you make changes to this, it'll make changes to that that .config file. And that .config file actually um, gives direction to how the what should be compiled into the kernel, out of the kernel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, some things are just support. You just you're just compiling. You're putting support for it in there, like support for for um, for uh, loadable module support. Now they have this kernel option for uh, to suit desktop workloads. Let's see what this is. Sometimes they'll give you this is an option to use to tune parameters better suit. I mean I might as well. <laughs> and I'm surprised that my desktop kernel that I have already didn't have that checked off. Okay, so let's go down here. Let's just take a look at some of these things. We might as well while I'm in here. <laughs> amateur radio support. I'm not going to be doing amateur ham radios with this thing anytime soon. I could take that out, but who knows? I might get into the mood, and if I have this kernel compiled and ready, or give this to someone else, and they're a ham radio user, you know, whatever. Um, Bluetooth is unchecked, so people complain about how Bluetooth isn't working. Well, the SUSE kernel apparently didn't come with Bluetooth subsystem support compiled. And it, I guess it basically uh, affects these different drivers here. Um, you need support for the fact that you have a hard drive in there. you need support for these and it's just support it doesn't mean you're gonna do a module or not now if I have up here if I have this checked off and it's a little bubble if I remember right that just means it's a module it's available if I have a check it's gonna be compiled into the kernel if it's blank it's not going to do anything and I'm not exactly sure what um, network card I have in here but if I opened up my 
command prompt that isn't being occupied by the kernel compilation, uh, I can run the ifconfig <coughs> config and see if it says what I got here. Maybe minus A. Tell me what driver I have. Hmm. Well, I'm not. I'm not so sure. Not so sure what. Uh, maybe if I type ls mod, they'll show my modules. This is. I'm going a little bit on a sidetrack here, but basically, um, I know I have a gigabit driver in here. Let's see if I could find it. Now, I think the R8169 may be the driver I'm using. I'm just not sure. So, I don't know how this would... And I'm, I'm kind of worried this is reading a config file that's just crippled. It's not reading the right one. <laughs> it can end up just absolutely trashing my system. Here's multimedia support. What's this? Do you want to use video for Linux? This doesn't make any sense. I'm sure I'm using video for Linux. Or I'm pretty sure I am. These are file systems support. So now I would want to have the BEOS file system in there. I could then I can access my um, other things. Now I got Linux. I've got. And that means module. I could load that as a module. Network filing systems. I just, I'm really wondering. Now I should have riser in here. If this isn't in here, then this will be a very. There's ext3. Now, see, this couldn't be right. I'm, I'm using the riser file system. And that's not even checked off as, as a module, so I, I'm not even comfortable to to do this. I'm hoping it's not just going to start compiling when I close it and discharge that. <laughs> so basically, um, until I can figure out how to get the actual, um, <laughs> we poke around here until I'm able to figure out how to get the actual. Um, dot config file if, if it still exists I, I just don't know what to do and then they want these and then there's this other thing where they want these uh, kernel files um, Kernel drivers signed. It's getting ridiculous. Let's see what it says. Read me. SUSE, where is it? A companion how to describe the build driver update disks. Configure the kernel, for example. <laughs> this is dangerous to do, it really is. I'm going to print this out, but I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go with this. I 
it's just too dangerous to put a how to on, on, on the net. So I'm going to stop there. So basically, um, I might end up doing this for myself, but I, I think it's very, if you, if you miss one step, you can just completely trash your system. And so I'm not, I'm not even willing to, <laughs> to do a how to for that because, you know, the way it's so automatic now, I, I just, um, and when I went in there, I could tell there's something wrong. I mean, I know I'm using the riser file system, and if that if it's, if that module isn't even loading, then how am I using it? You know, <laughs> I know I'm using it, so I'm not reading the old config file. So it means I gotta somehow figure out how figure out how to get all the old settings into this uh, configuration. And I think that make clone config might have something to do with it, but my God these commands have changed so often and one time I had it worked out back in the days when I was working on Windows but it's not going to work now so I'm not going to have an in time scan um, I myself I'm not too worried about it now I'm just going to show you how to scan your Windows disk and how to get your Windows disk to mount